Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making a delicious and surprisingly easy challah. So let's get started. In the bowl of your stand mixer, I'm gonna add three quarters of a cup or 180 mils of warm water. It's about 110 degrees Fahrenheit. I like one package of active yeast, not instant. That's a quarter of an ounce or two and a quarter teaspoons. Okay, to wake these yeast up and make things nice and sweet, I'm adding a quarter cup or 50 grams of granulated sugar. This hala is so rich and soft and like perfectly amazing. It's one of my favorite breads. Give it a stir and we're gonna set this aside for about five minutes or until the yeast is nice and foamy. If it doesn't foam up, start over because something was wrong with your yeast. It was either too old or it got too hot or it's just not the right day for it. While the yeast foams up, we're gonna measure our flour out Depending on the weather, you'll be using different amounts of flour. So if it's really humid outside or inside your house, you'll use a little bit less. And if it's nice and dry, you'll use a little bit more. You don't know how much flour you're gonna need until you're actually mixing things together. So let's measure out four and a half cups of all-purpose flour. That's 540 grams. Yeah, 540 grams. If you've never had challah before, it's a rich, amazing, soft, incredible bread. Yes, it's used for Shabbat dinner, but you can have it anytime. It's not reserved for special occasions. It makes amazing sandwiches, snacks, French toast, bread pudding, the works. You're gonna love this bread. Hello. A few minutes later, my yeast is nicely foamed. I know that it's not expired. It's good to go. I'm gonna grab my stand mixer and we're gonna get to work. This mixer makes everything so easy. You can always make something by hand. You could use a hand mixer with little dough hooks, but you'll be standing around for a while. So, don't know if you wanna do that. This bread is gonna be so soft for as long as it lasts because we're gonna use vegetable oil. Third of a cup to be precise. You could use butter, like melted butter in this, but it's gonna be good right out of the oven or when you warm it up, as opposed to just staying pillowy soft at room temperature. For the flour, I'm reserving about half of a cup. I'm gonna dump the rest right in. As soon as I add the eggs. <laughs> I wanna add the liquids first. I want two whole eggs for this. <laughs> I'm not gonna crack this egg directly into the bowl, like shattered into a thousand pieces. Check for shells, one goes in. I would go to my friend's house for Shabbat dinner like almost every week when I was in high school. I like had this wonderful memory of challah bread from my youth, but my memory is of a kid who grew up in Los Angeles and this challah bread is actually like a Germanic type of challah bread. That's why it's like so rich. That's why it has the braids and everything else. It's kind of connotes like hollow openness and um, scholars think that the first challah bread was like a very light, airy loaf where you tap it on the bottom and you get that nice, wonderful, hollow sound. So it's very interesting. Rambling on, one yolk as well, not the white. Now that those wet things are in, I'm gonna add my four cups of flour. In you go. And finally, one teaspoon of salt. There we go. We'll give it a nice, wonderful flavor pop your dough hook on, and we're gonna mix this up. If you watch this channel, you know that one of the things I am most afraid of is braiding breads. It's not my forte, but I've been practicing and I've gotten much better, and I'm ready to take on the challenge of this multi-strand braid. I'm here to help you out. It's actually really simple. You just have to kind of like have faith and go through the steps. I'm gonna mix this on medium low until I get a nice sticky elastic dough. If it's too sticky, I'll add in some of my remaining flour, but hopefully it does come together and be wonderful. You never wanna add all the flour a recipe requires when it gives you a range because your bread should just be like a light, wonderful cloud on your tongue, not like a dense, bready, like, situation. This looks great already. I wanna show you something though. It's not at all elastic. So if I lift it up, it just breaks right away. The gluten has not been developed. So now we're gonna let our mixer run for about like seven to 10 more minutes. Medium low. You can do some cleanup if you want. You can watch some videos. It's really up to you. It's 
been about eight minutes and well, 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 look how stretchy my dough is now. It's so much more smooth, it's really clinging, but it's not pulling away from the bowl just as much as I'd like. So I'm going to move it down with the spatula. The test for dough is that it should be sticky, like in a rich dough like this, sticky but not stick to your fingers. And this is totally sticking to my fingers, which tells me that we're gonna use a little bit more flour. Mixing on low, I'm gonna start sprinkling some in. A few tablespoons at first and we'll see how it goes. Sometimes just a little bit of flour will do wonders. Another thing about hala is that it's not all braided. So the type that's braided and like this specific kind really comes from Germany. And there's like a tradition of like beautifully braided breads in Germany and it has to do with an evil witch and her braided hair. <laughs> so it's like a symbolic lock of this braided hair would ward off evil spirits. And basically this tradition was taken on for Hala. They did away with all the witch stuff, it's like the braids. And here, the more strands that you have on this braid, the more prosperous and wealthy you are. So it's like a nice bit of symbolism to bring in for this beautiful traditional ritual bread. All right a little bit more flour. I bet that's gonna be good. That's enough flour, it just has to mix in. So I know that if I, if I take it now, it'll like not stick to my fingers, I can tell. Okay, this looks great, I can give it a tap. It's not sticking to my fingers, but it is nice and tacky, and it really has a lot of pull there, so it's not breaking when I pull it. Part of the window pane test. I'm gonna transfer this to a lightly oiled bowl, and we're gonna give it some time to rise. I'm gonna give it one or two turns just to coat it with oil all over. Cover your dough up, and we're gonna place this into a nice, warm, cozy place. It should be in the high 70s, so not screaming hot, not ice cold, if it's a cold day, just pop this into your oven with the light on and we'll come back to it when it's doubled in size. One of the few things that can go wrong on this bread is overproofing it. You're giving it too much time to rise. The bread loses some of its structure and it has like a bit of a sag. It's a little disappointing. It's still fine to eat. It's just disappointing to you. <laughs> so let's not do that. Keep an eye on it. About one to two hours. It should be doubled in volume. Twice this size. If you haven't subbed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I have new recipes twice a week and there's always something delicious on the horizon. My dough has doubled in size. It looks amazing. Look at that. Beautiful. I'm gonna lightly flour the surface, very, very lightly. And this gets dumped out. There we go. Now it's time to divide this into six basically equal pieces. So use a bench scraper to cut it in half. There you go. This is a great opportunity for you to bring your kids into the kitchen and have a little talk about part whole relationships and fractions. Like, oh, one whole split into two, divide into three. There's so many opportunities to talk about math and science in the kitchen. All right, take your little bits of dough and we're gonna roll these out into roughly 12 inch long strands. Could be a little bit longer, like maybe 13 and a half, but roughly a foot long. Very exciting, I found my measuring tape. I've been it's been lost for a while. So just stretch your dough at first and then give it a roll. It's gonna be great if it's a nice even log and not a log with thin and thick parts. We have our six strands, don't be daunted. Get a nice work area for yourself. So you wanna have these kind of out in a fan shape and the most frustrating part is starting. So have a nice, confident, prepared start. Bring these together and you could just mush them together, but let's give them a nice stack. Stack them almost into like a herringbone pattern. So one over the other. First off, take the outside right rope and move it two strands to the center. Take the second from left and move it all the way over. So cross over all the strands and now that's the outer right. Outer left gets moved two strands over to the center. Second to right moves to the outer left. And now we're gonna start over again. So it's just those steps repeated until the braid is completed. Outside right, two strands towards the center. 
Second from left gets crossed all the way over to the right. Outer left gets moved two spaces over to the center. Now the second from right gets moved to the outer left. And by the way, sometimes it seems confusing because you're moving a strand out of the way. It's not really getting braided. Like you're just flopping it over so you can braid other things and then it comes back into the equation. Look at this beautiful braid happening. We're doing it. <laughs> we're all finished braiding. That wasn't so bad. Now we're gonna tuck the end under so it's nice and pretty for both sides. You're gonna carefully transfer this onto a parchment lined baking sheet, so. And let it fall into place. Look how nice that was. I'm really happy with that, that looks good to me. This has to rise one more time. It's gonna double in size. The yeast are gonna do some more magic and all you wanna do is loosely cover this and let it sit for 30 minutes to an hour. Just keep an eye on it. it depends on how warm it is in your kitchen. We'll be right back. Oh, but in the meantime, don't forget to set your oven to 350 so it's nice and hot when this is ready so it can go right into the oven. Just about 40 minutes later, this is puffed and gorgeous, but it's gonna be even more gorgeous with an egg wash. This egg wash is just one egg white that's whisked up to froth it up. I like my challah to be just plain. I love the plain look, but some people like sesame seeds or poppy seeds all over the top, and this would act as a glue to hold those things on as well. My only bit of advice is to be gentle with your bread, so I'm using a nice soft brush and also to really get every nook and cranny because you want it to be uniformly golden, just like that. This looks beautiful. It's ready to go into the oven, 350 Fahrenheit for 20 to 25 minutes. It'll come out golden and beautiful, but if you tap the bottom, it'll feel hollow and that's how you really know the bread's done. Hmm. That is just a delicious, amazing bread perfect for Shabbat or any day. I hope you get a chance to make this recipe, and if you like this video, check out my bread playlist.